All right, all right, all right. Let's go. It is time for the return of the Florencio Files. And of course, right before we do the episode 200, it is fitting that we return to the classic days of the Sewer Mermaid. He sent us a few oldies, but goodies that apparently we never actually got given by Florencio back in the day. So we are here on Acropolis. That's right, a blast from the past. This replay is probably about one year old. Up here in the top left, the Sewer Mermaid Florencio. Saying good luck, have fun to his opponent, who down here in the bottom right is a blue Terran player called Tigo. Sending a very early SCV out, probably a good idea. When you're up against someone whose literal in-game name is Sewer Mermaid, I imagine scouting early is probably a good idea. I would say it is advisable. So this little drilly boy is going to go across the map and uh, see what he can find out. Oh, he proxy pylon. So it's gate gas. Is he going to build a second gateway there? What is this? No second gas yet, just chronoing probes. Immediately three workers on gas. And probe's going to start harassing. The second probe is going to be ready to do that proxy. Oh, is, is he going to get that? Oh, he might be able to kill that. Oh, good pullback by Tiger. This probe looking for a little bit more. Not going to be able to find it. Florencio's macro behind this probe micro, immaculate literally doing nothing with his money <laughs> cybercore goes down if it's a tech rush why is there no second gas and if it's a gate rush why is there no gate <laughs> he's like i got a micro in my probe and i'm like but shouldn't you be doing that to distract them while you're doing something else it's a oh it's a nexus in the main okay i was like we're starting to float a dangerous amount of money here flo what even okay he is going to go for the shield battery recall rush. Now, I think he's going to go adepts with this. Normally, it would be adepts. And he builds another gateway on the front as well. Yeah, adepts. Are going to, so it's going to be adepts. And then he might go for shield batteries with it as well. Now, how does the Terran respond? The second barracks goes down. He's going to build a reactor. A reactor. That's a bit ambitious, mate. That's going to be not, not going to be able to pop anything out until the Nexus is done. Taigo, are you, are you underestimating? Have you forgotten that recall can happen? Are you going to make the classic mistake that I made the first time I played against this where I was like, well, that's clearly just trying to scare me. <laughs> you need bunkers right now, dude. Tiger, where are the bunkers, mate? Oh, my God. A third gateway building there. Uh, you know what? He's only going to be able to recall like two adepts in here at the start, but then more adepts can be walking in from the front at the same time. A bunker is building here in this kind of weird not protecting the minerals location because he's more worried about the front. He thinks this is a red herring. He thinks this is a fake out, does Tygo. And things are about to get hot and messy. Uh, a third attack will be popping out in a few seconds. Nexus is ready. Oh, he's got two add-ons, but he hasn't built any units left. Yeah, okay, two Marines are going to pop. He needs more units right now, does Tygo. Tygo's building SCVs, mules, orbitals. Is not keeping up unit production. The absolute gall on this Terran player. Flo pretending it's a fake. Oh, he's waiting for the fourth Adept. He's going to run in the front with some Stalkers, and Adepts are going to recall all four in at once. I don't know if he should wait too long, though. His opponent's giving him an opening, but another Marauder. More Marines are about to pop out. The firepower of the Terran will get out of control in the near future here. He's got to take out those Marines. You can see him select it. He's got those Adepts clumped up. Is he going to go for it? Oh, he's clicking it. He's clicking it. There we go. Recall. Four adepts going to recall into that main base. The SCVs have pulled. The Marines are up front, though. Oh, okay. SCVs do start the tank. One adept has fallen. And these adepts, they're not really doing much. The Drilly Boy pull was successful. And they're going to go back and I think defend this. That Reaper will go down pretty quickly. Oh, what are we focusing on? The adepts are going down, dude. They're really not doing that much. I mean, taking out a few Marines and a Reaper is important. That is lowering the damage up. Well, that Marine, very nice micro. Manages to buy a lot of time. And four adepts for four Marines and a Reaper, not a good trade for Flo. But if he can take him down, if he can break through, that could be enough. That Nexus is still alive, but it's getting shot. I don't think it's going to get another recall off. This game could go on for a lot longer. Stalkers run in, kill a few SCVs, and Florencio takes the corner base. All right, he's created a lot of chaos here. He's definitely screwed with his opponent a little bit. He's down about six workers. But if he can take some good trades in the next minute or so, he could be good. 
but three Marauders, four Marines attack soon to be out. Tiger, he hasn't lifted it. What's he doing? He's got to go save that. Oh my God, he's trying to drop meals to repair. Florencio just clicks on it. Tiger. <laughs> He was in such a good position. He does get one stalker, but one stalker for a command center. I think Tiger was just so stressed out by the situation and so worried about the Nexus in his main, he forgot to lift his command center. All he needed to do was fly that to his main and he was good. Now, he's got a much better force right here. Flo's going to need to back on out. Oh, damn. He loses a bunch of the stalkers. These marauders taking him to Dicktown. Florencio, he smells a whiff of Gooch and he realizes what it's like to hang out in this terrible position. Flo's in a bad spot, man. Scan goes down, sees there's no tech in the main. Uh, doesn't really see anything, though, to be honest, unfortunately. Uh, probe, that <laughs> Florencio, he's so fucking funny. Did you see that? He's like, oh, he's, he's looking at my base. Grabs a probe and clicks it to the natural like, oh, I'm going to go and expand now that you've defended my rush. I certainly have not expanded to the corner of the map already. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, he's so fucking transparent sometimes. I love it. Florencio is the kind of guy who... He just... You know, like, like he sees police officers looking at him on the street. And he, like, he just, like, looks purposely, like, start shuffling around in his pockets and, like, looking real sus and stuff. And, like, looking at them nervously. Just, just because. He's like, he's like, I just need to sell a story, man. He, like, practices on his day-to-day -day life. Whenever cops, like, look at him, he starts running away. They start chasing just because they're like, yeah, well, I mean, he's running away. He must have done something wrong. <laughs> oh, he's such a shitbag. Uh, it's all about the misdirection, of course. Medivacs are on the way. Stim is done. Concussive is done. Now, that new command center got down there pretty quick, so I think Terran's still ahead. Just could have been more ahead if he kept the command center alive. With the medivacs coming out, it'll be really good. I do like there's a few more marines because right now he's very low on anti-air and he's not making combat shields. He's forgotten that one. The marine has to pull back away from that adept. Uh oh, Taigo, I think, has frozen up a little bit on, on not knowing what's happening in this game. Notice that there is no eBay. There's no combat shields. Their CVs are being built. But will that be enough? Did that medevac just scout his base? Yeah, I don't know. He's seen that gateway there now. He still doesn't know about the Chads building in the corner. Marines kick the shit out of Chads. And even without combat shields, if there's enough Marines with medevac support and stim, I think they'll win that fight. Uh, one Marine for two Stalkers and an Adept, as well as depowering the two gates. That is a brilliant trade. And Flo's just behind the curve. We don't often see Florencio in PVT this far behind. Normally by this point, he'd already want the Void Rays to be running around doing damage and be going into things like either Tempest to pick away from afar, Colossus, getting his gateways up into Storm, getting another base out somewhere on the map. This is going to be really hard for him. He's, he's kind of just going for the big old surprise mass Chad. And, I mean, four Chads are going to counterattack. There's no anti air. He can only build three Marines at a time. He's just built another command center and a third barracks. This could actually time out all right. If he can pull that army home away from his main base, it's going to buy him very valuable time. And he's going for a robo in the corner. Ooh, okay. This is a really good move. Gets in there, turns on his prismatic alignment. That Marauder says good night. And does finally go down. Takes out a few Marines, a few SCVs. The prismatic alignment actually used way too early here because he ends up using most of it just to kill SCVs. It would be much better used now when he's actually killing the command center. Tygo's going to stim in and try to take out his base. A little bit of a basic tradey, but uh, ooh, basic tradey, void raidy do very good in this situation. There are four turrets building inside the main base. <laughs> I think just Marines and Vikings actually probably would have done the trick, especially if he got in that bunker. But uh, as it is, I think Tygo thinks he's in a bit of a base trade right now. He, he does not know where the sewer mermaid has set up his infrastructure. Oh, the command center. Oh, did he just stim one Marine? Yes, he did. Uh-oh. All these turrets, they're not protecting the production, dude. That's six chads. They're going to take out the starport. He needs to get home. Oh my god, he's trying to lift to the top right. I think he, he's, he's trying to go for the base trade now. The turrets will keep him alive, but I think he needs to get all of his production back behind his mineral lines. Tygo here taking a massive hit just when he was about to get to the point where I feel like his bio was going to explode in power. His marines are coming home. I think it's enough to take out these void rays. 17 marines should be enough, but lots of them are still popping as... Or dying as they pop, I should say. That drop is looking for the base. No, he misses it. I mean, that might actually be good for him since there are Void Rays up there. He turns around and goes up, but there's Chads waiting to greet him. Oh, no. Tank Marauder drop is not going to do base good against that base, mate. Attack. 
Oh, he keeps changing his mind about what he wants to do. And you know what? If these Void Rays can survive, he's in a good spot. Okay, he's going to go up here. He scans. But he sees this Void Rays. He knows he's got no anti-air. Okay, so Tygo is going for a little bit of a base trade now. Uh-oh. That Immortal's going to be in trouble. Okay, he's stimmed really early, though. There's no shield batteries, dude. The Marines take out one Void Ray. Oh, there's still a lot of Void Rays. That's eight Void Rays. There's not that many Marines in there. Stim runs out. They don't have shields. The Marines are going to take out one. No, that Void Ray pulls back. Oh, my God. Eight Trust Fund Chads. And those Trailer Park Marines corpses go around the outside, around the outside. Oh, my God. Jesus. Oh my god, what do you say? You're such a pathetic cheeser? And then he said, obviously, he called him the... He, he said, you know what? Protoss buildings might look ceramic. But I think they're made out of wood. A bundle of wood. I think what he's honestly commenting on is the fact that Florencio's strategies are so straight fire. That is like a bunch of matches. If you think about it, he calls him a bundle of sticks because if you think about it, it's the, the cheesy rush, the recall, the stalkers going into the surprise void rays. It's like you strike a match into a big bundle of sticks and a fire starts. And he's basically just complimenting because he could never achieve such a level of greatness. Remember that this game started with a Nexus in the main, four depths got recalled in, and they killed four Marines and a Reaper for a Nexus and four Adepts. This is about as shit as it could possibly have gone for Flo. He was not in a good position. He then did get the Command Center, which got him a little bit of a chance. <laughs> but a complete failure to scour the map against the cheesy player. The player where you must check every dirty corner. You must find out their secrets. There is nothing more scary than the cheeser. The players who are so flexible, they will, they will bend this way, bend that way, they will totally go all in on a different attack path and getting stuck building Marauders, Medivacs, tanks. Ooh, that's a rough one. That is a rough one. The funny thing is, normally, against when he rushes Colossus after the rush, this would be a lot better than the people that go Heavy Marine. But whenever we see them go Heavy Marine, I feel they run into Florencio's Colossus. Whenever they go Heavy Marauders and tanks, they run into his Void Rays or Charge Elts or something like that. Very nicely done, Florencio. As always, some vintage Florencio action there and some very happy opponents. Shout out to Tygo there for getting the short straw and a big thank you to Flo. Guys, don't forget to tune in this coming Sunday, Monday morning, about 9 a.m. if you're in Australia, New Zealand, Oceania. Uh, that's East Coast Australia time, so somewhere between 7 and 9 a.m., I guess 7 a.m. Beijing time. Uh, I believe it's a two-hour time difference at the moment. could be three hours, actually. Shit. I don't even know my time zones right now. Sorry. Sometime in the morning, Asia Pacific time. And that is, of course, going to be about 2 p.m. Uh, West Coast, 5 p.m. East Coast uh, US time. And it is late in the evening, about 11 p.m. Central European time. Catch you guys then for the live Florencio Files episode number 200 celebration. Don't forget to check out the Patreon. Link is below. Big thanks to Maxan and Vivek. And we'll see you for episode number 200. Goodbye and good night.